Good morning and uh, welcome to uh, Memphis Monday 162. Um, the story is uh, in Memphis Monday 145, uh, way on last winter. Uh, I put out a video and I made, made a big cutting board and I misspoke and called it an end grain. Well, I noticed the mistake right away, right after I put it out. Uh, and I changed the title and put a little something in the comments explaining that it wasn't technically an end grain uh, cutting board. Well, anyway, um, what we're going to do today is we're going to make a, a real end grain, and I'm going to uh, try to explain again uh, what the difference is. And, but we're not going to get that done. We're not going to get any explaining done unless we do what? That's right. Let's knock off the chit chat and get to work. This is stock for our uh, cutting boards. Uh, this is basically how we uh, put our stock together in, in Memphis Monday 150 or 145. Let me show you the, the difference. The reason these uh, butcher block uh, kind of in grain cutting boards are not as common is it takes uh, several more steps, a lot more cutting, a lot more gluing. Uh, you got to use your uh, thickness planer and all that stuff. Uh, this is really just the start of the process. There's three ways you can put these uh, uh, boards together, or these uh, cutting boards together. There's, you can put them together plain, in a plain saw fashion like this. It's where you put the edges together like that, and that would be like for a cheese board or, you know, uh, light duty. Now this is how they're normally put together if you buy a cheap one in the store and this is called a uh, plain plain style second way to do it is to put them up on the edge like this and this is quarter sawn now this is the way we made the uh, cutting board in Memphis Monday 145 then the third way the way, thing we're going to do today is we're going to put the end, end grain up See, this is the end grain here, and this is going to be up, okay, and that's end grain. End grain, quarter sawn, and plain. Okay, uh, what I do now is I'll just take, the, take these clamps off, and we can begin to process this. Uh, I think I'm going to make two, two small cutting boards. And instead or two small uh, cutting boards instead of one big one so let me uh, break this thing down and we'll get with it this is the reason uh, a lot of woodworkers don't like to use uh, Tide Bond 3 is it reacts uh, pretty violently with uh, anything that's steel and you get these black marks little mo the, our little mock-up again show you what's going on here's our boards as they now stand you know single boards that are running this way uh, with the quarter sawn up now we want and now what we're going to do later on is we're going to cut this board into strips and then the end grain will be up what that means is that this surface right here has to be perfectly flat and smooth uh, because this is going to become a gluing surface. Okay, now what I got to do is cut the ends off. And remember, this is going to be the top, this end grain. So and this has to be a nice straight cut and now we're going to cut off some two inch strips off the uh, our blanks there now our boards were standing up like this and then we sliced it now we're, we're going to slice it and then we're going to reposition the boards 
with the end grain up so it looks something like that. Cut our sections here and remember they were like that. Now we're going to flip them up and glue them together like that. Okay, let me uh, chop up the other one. Okay, now I, I got them all laid out. Um, I don't have them end grain up. I got the end grain to the side because we'll be spreading glue on those surfaces except for the first block which I've already put in the clamps. So let's spread some glue on this thing. So now what I do is just take the these boards that spread the glue on and put them in the clamps. Our first uh, glue up was in the on the minor axis and this glue up is on the major axis. Now what's going to happen here, I'm going to put this uh, regular clamp on. That'll tend to keep it from uh, cupping. But what it's going to do is it's going to loosen up. It's going to loosen up these other clamps. So just remember that. So I put these regular clamps in here, tighten them down a little bit. That, that means it's going to loosen these three clamps here. So I need to put a little, well that one's not bad. And yeah, that one wasn't bad. I didn't loosen them a lot, so I must have had it good and tight. And I got the uh, second one glued up. And this might be a little takeaway here. Uh, on these clamps, you don't want to mix these pipe clamps, the, the different browns. I got, I got uh, you know, I got these red ones and I got these blue ones. And they, they work essentially the same way. The problem is that they're different heights above the, uh, above the deck here. And one of the benefits of pipe clamps is it provides an automatic platform for your piece to lay on and lay flat. And if you have uh, these pipe clamps of different heights, then that defeats that purpose. So don't mix these clamps if, if that's uh, important to you. I'll let them dry for a couple hours. That should be, uh, you know, they're not totally set, but probably good enough we can keep working on them. Here's what it looks like uh, when we get it out of the clamps. Um, let me show you what it looks like after we run it through the uh, thickness planer. And then we run it through the thickness planer and the, uh, and the router and do a little sanding and this is how it, uh, this is how it turns out. Okay, let me show you, give you some take takeaways on the thickness planer. Okay, the uh, takeaway is when you put this thing through a thickness planer, you got to make sure that you don't try to take off too much because we're, you know, we're we're, we're trying that the planers don't then like to work very good against the uh, uh, end grain. Okay, so I got the, uh, the top flattened out, still needs to be sanded, but now we need to, we need to plane these uh, edges.
I'm doing here is installing a bullnose bit, which is a little round bit, so we can put a little ledge, little notch in the edge uh, to kind of grab hold of. Okay, now for some uh, hand sanding, I got my 220, 320, and 400. Now going with the grain is not so important on this because the grain is sticking straight up. So, uh, but you can. Uh, that's a 220. This is 320. Now I like this uh, butcher block oil. Uh, this is this is what I use, but because it adds a little color to the uh, wood. But it's not the only thing out there. There's hundreds of them. Uh, this is just pure cutting board oil. Adds no color at all. It's just a pure. Um, odorless, colorless, transparent. And then there's other variations. This is butcher block. Um, this is basically butcher block oil that's got beeswax in it and other kind of uh, uh, natural waxes that are food grade. Um, and you can put this stuff on and let it, let it dry and buff and buff it out. But we're gonna use uh, this stuff here. Now, a new cutting board, you, before you use it, you need to season it, which means that you need to put at least, you know, five to seven applications of oil over a week period to uh, let it soak in and do its magic. Well, there are in-grain cutting boards for Memphis Monday 162. Two inches thick. In-grain, they got a real nice pattern to them. Well, that'll do it for another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 162. Today we built some, a couple of end grain, end grain cutting boards. Uh, you know, I don't know how you, how you do this without a, a thickness planer, unless you're awful good with a hand planer, but it's kind of hard to plane those uh, boards exactly flat uh, so that you can re-glue them together without a thickness planer. Uh, and then when you finally get the end, end grain up, it's, it's hard to make them perfectly flat because you got that end grain up and that's very hard to uh, sand or plane or anything. So um, I suppose you can do it without a hand plane, but boy, it'd be a tough job. I don't know how to do it. I think I'll give these to my neighbors. Uh, they have to listen to my uh, saws and uh, planer and all my air compressors and all that business going off all the time. So if I... Uh, Maybe if I give them something every now and then, they won't be mad at me. All right, that's, uh, that'll do it. I guess I've gabbed uh, long enough. I can't think of anything else to say. Oh, yeah, I remember. Make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.